Hey traders, Gavin McMaster here from Options Trading IQ doing a video collaboration with Bar Chart. And today's video is on understanding volatility skew. We're going to look at what it is and how to trade it. And I'll also show you some really cool features available on barchart.com when we're looking at volatility and volatility skew. Just a quick reminder that everything discussed is for educational purposes only, is general in nature and does not take into account your personal circumstances. So not all options are priced equally, even if they have the same expiration date. That's because of something called volatility skew. And if you're not paying attention to it, you could be missing hidden opportunities or walking into hidden risks. In this video, I'll explain what volatility skew is, why it happens, and how smart option traders can use it to their advantage. So firstly, why it matters. Volatility skew affects how much you pay or collect for different strikes and understanding it can help you improve strategy selection and manage risk. What is volatility skew? Well, it's the difference in implied volatility between options at different strike prices, but with the same expiration date. We can also have a different type of volatility skew where we look through the same strike price over different time periods. You might think that all strikes should have the same implied volatility, but in practice, they don't. So we've got three types of skew. The first one is vertical skew. And this is the differences in implied volatility between in the money, at the money, and out of the money options. Let's go and look at an example. So if we go over to barchart.com, we're looking at Amazon and we're going under the options section here, we're clicking on volatility and Greeks. And if we look at the puts, for example, the reason we call this vertical skew is because we're going up and down the option chain. And you can see here that as we go further out of the money, the implied volatility gets higher and higher. And this is a pretty normal scenario. It's because traders are willing to pay more for out of the money puts because they're paying up for that crash protection. So we've got at the money options here at about 48%. And then when we go out of the money to about a 15 delta here, we've got 58% volatility and an 11, 12 delta here, 60.8% uh, IV. So very high IV in the out of the money puts. And we've got some other um, great information that we can see here in terms of volume, open interest, uh, and some of our other Greeks as well. So this is a really handy page when you want to check out vertical skew. The second type of skew is horizontal skew. We call this time skew. This happens when different expirations have different implied volatilities and it can be also known as the term structure. So let's go and have a look at that. To look at the term structure, we'll go over to volatility charts here. And we can see the first section here is our term structure. So this is showing us the implied volatility for the April 17th options, April 25th, April 29th, we've got earnings here as well, and the May 2nd. You can see that the volatility uh, straight after earnings is very high. These are the ones that are most impacted by that earnings announcement. And then as we go further out in time, the volatility starts to drop away. Now, there's two important terms here when it comes to horizontal skew, and that's contango and backwardation. So contango is where short-term volatility is less than the longer-term volatility. So we, here we can see we've got a little bit of contango. And then this section here is all in backwardation, where the Shorter term volatilities are higher than the longer term volatilities. I equate backwardation as a bit of, it's kind of panic mode. Um, and I have a saying, bad things happen in backwardation. We're seeing the market correcting at the moment. Most of the, the correction has happened after stocks and the market in general went into backwardation. So if you remember that saying, bad things happen in backwardation, um, it's kind of panic mode. Whereas when we're in a nice bull market, a nice uptrend, most of the term structure is going to be in contango. Now, there's always a bit of noise with earnings and things like that, but generally speaking, in a bull market, we're going to be in contango. Uh, in a correction phase or a bear market, we're going to be in backwardation. And the reason we call this one horizontal skew is because we're going sort of horizontally through time. The first one, we were going up and down that option chain. Now we're going horizontally through time. So that's one way to remember the difference between vertical and horizontal skew. And the last type of skew is put call skew. And this is the difference in implied volatility between the puts and the calls. Uh, puts generally have higher implied volatility. It's not always the case when there's uh, rampant speculation um, in stocks like um, GameStop a few years ago, even Tesla a few years ago, NVIDIA. 
Um, sometimes the call options can actually trade with higher implied volatility because there's so much demand for those call options and people are, are really pushing the stock higher and, and loading up on calls as the stock rallies. But most of the time puts are going to have higher IV than the calls. And that's again, because people are willing to pay up for that crash protection. So why does volatility skew happen? Well, here are three big reasons. Demand for protection is the first one. As I mentioned, investors often buy puts to hedge portfolios, increasing demand and IV for downside strikes. So that's our first reason people are willing to pay up for protection. They're willing to pay more for their protection. Market expectations. So if traders are expecting big moves in one direction, the option market adjusts implied volatility accordingly. The example we talked about there was Tesla and NVIDIA when they were going on their big bull runs. Um, there was a lot of demand for call options and the implied volatility on those calls went through the roof because of that demand. The third reason is supply and demand imbalances. So large institutional orders for specific strikes can drive up IV at those strike prices, creating distortions in pricing. Um, and the other thing I'll add here is earnings as well can create a lot of skew because there's a lot of um, uncertainty around that event. So that can create um, some skew between different strikes um, and, and expiration dates. You can visualize skew using an implied volatility graph, and we saw some of those functions that you can do on barchart.com. And most platforms will let you plot IV by strike. Again, you can get all that information on barchart as well. Here's a few things to look for. The first one, contango and backwardation. Remember, bad things happen in backwardation. That's our term structure or our horizontal skew. That's a really important one to keep an eye on. Put skew is the second one. So typically we're going to see IV increasing as we go further out of the money in the puts. So again, we can keep an eye on that. And if those out of the money puts get uh, ridiculously expensive, that can be a good time to potentially sell those puts um, or do things like a diagonal spread. Call skew is another one to watch out for. And this is when IV increases at higher and further out of the money call strikes, uh, which is common in meme stocks or, or hot stocks at the time, um, such as NVIDIA uh, a few years ago. If we go back to barchart.com, there's another section here, Max Payne and Volsku. And we can see, again, our put call skew here. And as we're going further out of the money uh, in the puts, for example, that yellow line, the IV is getting higher and higher the further out of the money we go. Those puts are very expensive. People are willing to pay for that crash protection. So this is a good one to keep an eye on. When those puts get really expensive, there can be some value there um, selling those out of the money puts. Now that you can read volatility skew, here's how you can trade it. Just like a stock, we want to buy low and sell high. So we want to buy low volatility and we want to sell high volatility. If the puts are overpriced, we could sell out of the money puts or put spreads, which will give us great time decay and also selling those more expensive puts. And we can do things like um, spreads or calendar spreads, diagonals, where we're selling a higher volatility strike and we're buying a lower volatility strike to hedge our risk. Number two is ratio spreads or back spreads. So when skew is really high, uh, it might be cheaper to buy two out of the money puts and one, sell one closer in. Um, so that can sort of benefit if there's a big move in the skewed direction. The third thing we want to do is avoid buying high skew options. So we don't want to overpay for any puts or calls with abnormally high implied volatility because you're basically buying that expensive SKU. Um, so one thing you can do is use IV rank and also look at those SKU charts, those volatility charts to avoid overpaying for any overpriced options. Fourth thing we can do is trade unbalanced condors. So if the SKU is particularly steep on one side, either the puts or the calls, you could adjust your condor um, to take in more credit on that side, do more contracts, but that does leave you a little bit exposed to directional risk, so keep that in mind. But unbalanced condors are a really great strategy um, when there's a bit of put call skew. So volatility skew isn't just a quirk of the options market. It can be used as a signal as well. Uh, remember that saying, bad things happen in backwardation. And volatility skew tells you where traders are placing their bets, where fear lives, and where opportunity might be hiding. SKU reflects different demand for different strikes, especially downside puts. Learn to read IV curves on barchart.com before placing your trades. Hopefully you've learned a little bit from today's video. Remember to sell premium where SKU is inflated and avoid overpaying where SKU is steep. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.